Hello guys, this is the Epiphany. Today I'm on the server Elizaeli and I'm going to be making a video on how to level up a maging profession. Specifically, it's going to be the dual maging profession because it's the one that can get you the most profit and it's the one that I've decided to level up to 200 to make me profit on this server. The reason for this is because you are able to AP and MP EXO rings, which sell for a lot of karmas. You can also mage amulets and drop the AP to get sync and then mage 3% resistance or whatever. But the point of this video is to show you how to level up the profession. You might notice that I am already level 142. Uh, this video is being recorded on the 20th of March. And the reason I mentioned that is because the server Elizaeli actually had a rollback and it didn't affect me because I was sleeping. Uh, but the fact that they had a rollback, it affected quite a lot of people. And they've decided to give 50% extra XP for today until 9am. So I've got roughly 8 hours remaining. And the thing about that is that I've already leveled up my profession to level 142. I've been very, very quick about it. Uh, it's pretty nice. So I'm kind of in the rhythm. So hopefully I'll be able to explain to you. Uh, the tricks in this video okay so what we want to do is um you know you need to buy certain rings and mage those rings or it could be amulets as well but you mage those items and whenever you mage you get xp okay so the first rule is the closer your profession level is to the level of the ring you are maging the more xp you will get so level 142 now for example the closer an item i'm maging to level 142 the more pro uh, the more xp i'll get so i'm currently maging a soft oak ring i've got all the rings here that are effective and if you want to have a look at the list i suggest you join the echo discord and when you join make sure to go to channel access and you need to react to the emote uh, that is the gear looking thing and that will get you access to the maging channel. So it's this one here. That'll get you access to the maging channel, which is this one. And then you click the pin the messages. Go down and look at Jew, which is short for jeweler. And these are the items that you want to get uh, for leveling up your profession to level 200. The reason why these items have been chosen, I want to give a shout out to Marco here. He's been very good in the community, contributed a lot. Um, these items are chosen because of the stats they have. What I mean by that is, um, I need to mention the second rule now, is that the higher the sync value of the rune you are adding to the item, the more XP you'll get. So, as you know, um, okay, so let me just show you an example here. So the first ring that we need to do is a, a plus one and you know, that's just strength and agility. Just, just mage that, it doesn't really matter. But then as you go into the next ring, which is level 7, is a pink peewee ring. You notice that it has a heal. And the significance of heal is that it's one of the popular runes to use because it's 10 sync. And 10 sync is, you know, a decent amount of sync considering the heals rune is actually quite cheap as well. So you want to use that. And if you move on to Space Vader ring, you notice that it has heals as well. So... The heals, very nice because 10 sync. And then moving on to the next one has heals as well. And then moving on to Moscatano has heals as well. And then moving on to level 26, you have similar wedding ring. And this doesn't have heals, but it has wisdom. And wisdom is pretty nice as well for leveling up your profession because wisdom runes are cheap. And a par wisdom rune is 9 sync, so that's quite nice. A ra wisdom rune is 30 sync. So that'll give you a lot of XP. And then moving on, we notice that we start to get into items that have damage. The significance of damage is that it's 20 sync, which is pretty nice. And the rune isn't too expensive either. If you were to, you know, uh, the fact that I'm talking about sync, you know, the more sync, the more XP you get. If we, you know, what, you might be asking right now, why not just use, you know, like an MP or an AP rune, which are 90 and 100 sync respectively. Well, you can use an AP and MP rune to mage, and you will get a lot of XP for it, but you notice that the rune is very, very expensive. 
So it's kind of like a compromise between the cost of the rune and the sink value. So you have like a plus three heals rune here, which is only 1,477 karmas. That's 30 sink. And you know, you have a 90 sink rune here, which is one MP, and it costs like more than 10 times the amount. So you really want to get a compromise. And then moving on, you know, you have damage here as well. Keep maging. Wisdom mage. Uh, damage. Uh, damage and heals. You also have summon. You know, summon runes are about 4,000 karmas, so it's not too bad to use either. Those are 30 sync. Then you have damage and prospecting. Okay, so prospecting is pretty nice as well, because a plus three prospecting rune is not too expensive, and it's nine sync. And then you have a few dollar amulet uh, at level 91. And, you know, funnily enough, I critted a 10 wisdom rune here. But the matter of fact is, you notice that it's missing AP, vitality, and air resistance. The reason for that is because the runes are expensive and it's not worth using them. So you might as well just use the stats, um, the, the runes that are cheap and you know, like damage, prospecting, power, wisdom and chance, int, uh, strength, agility. Um, like even the fixed resistance runes like plus three neutral resistance, plus three fire resistance, those aren't too expensive either. And, you know, as you move on, you'll see that I've completely ignored the expensive stats. So I've gotten the runes for the cheap stats only, and I mage those only. All right, so right now I'm actually up to Soft Oak. So I'm going to continue doing Soft Oak right now, and I'll explain more about how it works. I also believe that it's important to show you from the high levels up, because the low levels, you know, of leveling up your profession is quite boring. Okay, so what we have here is, okay, I've got the XP bar. And let's add a free prospecting rune. It lands, as you notice, the XP goes up. Now the rest of these runes here, it is, um, you know, it's quite suitable to use a plus 10 characteristic rune, such as strength, int, agility, and uh, chance. Because plus 10, you know, they're 10 sync, and then they're not that expensive. Yeah, so you just want to keep alternating, you know. You don't care about the stats, you don't care if it overmage, you don't care if it exomage, all you want to care about is the fact that the runes land. Which brings me to the next point, is that, okay, so you notice whenever I add a rune in, if it lands, like, without taking any stats, that's what we call a crit land. And crit lands will get you more XP than a, a, a land that drops stats. So... That's what you've got to keep in mind. Okay, I'm actually a bit laggy here. I'm not sure why. Okay, so you notice that the stats, are, you know, the ones that we care about are actually pretty, you know, pretty decent now. It's getting close to max. So sometimes it can be a bit boring because like, see, at a place like this, you add max and it's not really effective to mage anymore. So you'd have to like drop it and then add in, you know, you have to drop the stat uh, drop the stat just in order to bring it back up and in order to do that there is a way um, it, it's called a you know a, a, well it's not really a name for it but you purposely drop stats by adding you know a heavy rune on so right now I'm adding on like par heals um, which is 30 sync and it's not going to land because it's very hard to crit that but see how I added a couple of them on and then the stats were destroyed now I can add on, you know, runes in peace. So adding on this Ra Wisdom, see we've got like a chunk of XP there because Ra Wisdom is 30 sync, which is a lot. So let's try damage now. Damage is getting pretty nice XP as well, as you can see the XP bar going up. So you're alternating between uh, Wisdom and Damage, which is pretty nice uh, because those two are probably the best to, to use. And we're gaining levels pretty nice as well. Every time you level up a profession, you get pods. And at the start of the video, you would have noticed that I've leveled up, you know, some of my other professions. Uh, those other professions were actually leveled up uh, two days ago in the 18th of March Almanacs, which gives a 50% XP bonus to crafting professions. I leveled up those professions so that I would have extra pods. And the significance of that is so that I am able to hold a lot of runes because maging requires, you know, you to hold a lot of runes. 
So we're, we're at a pretty optimal position now. We're just alternating between damage and wisdom. All right, at a case like this, you can't do a plus 10 wisdom anymore because it's going to overmage and probably won't land. Well, well, actually, you can do it because the max you can overmage to is 33. But you want to bring in the other stats such as strength and int. Uh, you keep adding them in. You know, plus 10, as I, as I said at the start, is plus 10 sync. So that's, um, you, know, you know, the runes are 10 sync. So you're going to get a lot of XP for that. So look, it is possible to overmage wisdom. There's no error message here, but as long as we don't go above 33. Okay, so once that's done there, you got to bring it back down with other runes. All right, now let's do the damage. So I'm at level 148, so now it's time to stop the soft oak ring and we'll get the drowned ring in. Now in this particular item here, I've uh, the runes that we're going to be using are Intelligence, Chance, Agility, Wisdom, uh, Heals, Initiative. Uh, initiative is pretty cheap as well. And Par Neutral Damage. Par, uh, sorry, Par Neutral Resistance. Par Neutral Resistance is 6 sync and only costs 224 karmas each. So that's pretty nice. Okay, as you can see, the stats are pretty much, uh, you know, near perfect right now. So I'm going to try and drop it with a, um, uh, where's the, okay, I can't use a par heals because you can't overmage. So I'm probably going to use damage runes to drop it. Um... Yeah, okay, might as well add a summon. Let's see how much XP we get. All right, that, and that jumped like a third of the bar. Pretty nice. All right, now let's just continue maging. Yeah, heals is pretty nice, getting us a lot of XP. Power Wisdom, pretty nice. Uh, nine Sync. You know, so like, you, you, you're basically just trying to like, add in runes that have high Sync value. And then... You know, that'll get you the higher XP. Uh, let me just double check this. Uh, the next... Uh, level 156 is the next item. Okay, so I'll just keep maging till I get to level 156. Now I'm tempted to like add in an MP rune or some shit just to drop the stats. Because, you know, the aim here is to get the stats as low as possible. And then basically mage it back up. That's how you get XP. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, every time you add runes here, um, you get XP. Okay, that brings me to the next rule, which is rule number three. If you add a rune and it doesn't land at all, then you will not get any XP for it. It, you know, it might sound unfortunate, but that's it. Logged. Hopefully it's a bit better now in terms of lag. Ah, uh, yes, it is much better. Alright, so I'm on to the level 156 item now, which is the Cantile Amulet, and I'm just going to be, you know, spamming runes on that. Uh, if you look at the stats on the item here, the majority of the stats are pretty much worthless. Uh, 
Oh, in, in terms of maging, that is. So, I'm going to be completely ignoring the crit, AP, range, damages, lock, damage. Um, pretty much just using the neutral resistance, the prospecting, and the wisdom runes to try and level up this uh, dual magus profession. Uh, you might think that, you know, the item looks ugly, but like I said in the previous video, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's expected. Alright, let's see, overmeasure raw wisdom doesn't land, it probably won't land. Ah, uh, there we go. And then we keep maging, you know. Uh, just like what I did with the previous item, I'm going to skip ahead because, you know, once you get the general idea of what to do, there's no really any need to watch me do this. Um, the uh, the the only thing that I you know feel a little bit unsure about is maybe some of you guys who you know want to see how the maging the low level items work, like the plus one and then the pink peewee ring and so on. Uh, but honestly, it's 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 just the same. Okay, I'll cut back when I get to the next item. Okay, moving on to the next item at level 161, which is an Obsidemon Ring. Um, so we have heals here which is the main interest and we're going to be maging heals up we're also going to be maging pushback resistance uh the runes are a little bit expensive compared to the others but you know it's not too bad so yeah that's what i'll be using for this video um i would also recommend you use pushback resistance as well because you know a six sync rune worth 1.1 kk is actually not too bad um as opposed to, you know, every other rune here, it, it could be a bit expensive uh, to do it. Oh, actually, we have neutral damage, which is 5 sync, and that's 700 kk, and then earth damage, which is 800 kk. Actually, it might be a good idea to use those. So, I'm just gonna head out and buy some of those, actually. I didn't notice it was that cheap on Elizele, uh, because on Echo, it's actually a lot more expensive. It's like 1,500. So... Yeah, let's see. Earth damage. Um, sorry. Earth damage. Neutral damage. Yeah, pretty cheap. Fire damage as well, I think. Okay, that's pretty cheap as well. Oops. Uh, okay. Going back. Obsidian ring, fire damage, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's not too bad, you see, um, definitely would not want to use a critical rune because that's very expensive. Yeah, so, it, you know, you probably got the idea by now, since this is like the third or fourth item that I'm maging in this video. All you got to do is just add runes in and off. Um, you know, drop runes and then add them back, and so on. So it's quite, uh, quite self-explanatory. So once again, I'm going to skip ahead, and when I get to the next item, I'll cut back to the video. Okay, so now that I'm at the level 168, we can start the next item, which is Ring of Profits. 
And this particular item is a similar story to the previous one. Uh, we have some elemental damage here, which I'll be doing. Uh, maybe not water damage because I'm too lazy to go and buy the runes. But, you know, we have the prospecting. We have resistance neutral here. We have wisdom. We have int. We have chance. So it should be all right to mage. If the range and the summon drops, I'm going to be completely ignoring it because um, it's very expensive to... Uh, buy those runes and there's no point in adding them back in since it's probably going to drop later anyway all right so look we just got a 25 chance over mage there just by dropping stats so that's uh pretty funny uh yeah but it seems that the stats we have here are pretty much uh close to being max i'm just gonna try and drop them with a par heals Okay, so I've reached level 180 dual mages and according to the guide that Marco made, at level 179 you're supposed to do a pot-bellied ring and then level 186 or 188 use a fungal ring or a colette ring and then that'll get you to level 200. But I've decided to do something a little different and that's basically to try and MP exo mage a tash ring and I'm going to be doing this uh, from level 180 until I get to level 200 if the MP lands early and I'm not level 200 profession yet then I'm probably going to buy another Tash ring and MP exo that ring as well or I'll just get you know one of the rings that he suggested probably um probably a fungal ring or something because it's pretty cheap and then I'll mage that so yeah the rest of this video is pretty much just exo maging